So there we go. I was going to do a video of myself, but that proved quite difficult being as I'm sheltered in place by myself and um, I didn't have anyone to hold the camera. <laughs> so <laughs> I decided to do a PowerPoint instead. That was a bit easier. So you've probably heard about eco prints or eco dyeing. It is a process of pressing leaves up against paper with a mordant, uh, the pre-treated paper, and getting the tannins from the leaves to adhere to the paper so that the papers are stained with the imprints of the leaves. That's a picture of some of my favorite leaves, Japanese maple. They're actually uh, reddish when you start, but the color comes out green on the paper. Uh, so some precautions, and this is very important because some plants are toxic to humans and breathing the steam is, uh, can be harmful, can give you headaches or worse, we don't know, because we do it outside when we can and we do it uh, with lots of vent fans on and um, lots of ventilation. And I dedicate specific pots for the eco dyeing so that those are not used for food preparation. And also the alum that I use as one of the mordants is um, not good to breathe that in. It's a powder, so it's not good to breathe that. And of course, the steam is hot. So you do want to be careful when you're opening the lids and use pot holders and, and tongs. That picture is um, some onion skins. We'll talk about those more later. And it's also a picture of some uh, eucalyptus leaf that's on there, but the blue is, is coming from red cabbage, another color shift, different leaves and, and other plant materials at times. So here's just a sample of some of the leaves that I really like to use. Um, I gather them on walks around the neighborhood, try not to take from people's private property, but um, occasionally um, I bring them home and rinse off any bugs or bird poop and put them in a book uh, till they pretty much dry out. And I like to flatten them too so that they're easier to use in the eco printing. Um, and after they're pretty dry, I transfer them to a paper, a plastic bag, but don't close the plastic bag. I just store them that way so they still get a bit of air. And I find that even old leaves will give really nice prints. Um, so people often ask me about uh, one of the leaves that's not on here is ginkgo. And while it has a really nice shape and I love it, I find that for me, it doesn't always print really well. I get a, a light yellow uh, print with that. And some people have had better luck with it, but that's the only reason that it's not on there. I do encourage you to use, try it. Try whatever leaves you have around. It's an experimentation process. So go ahead and give the leaves in your yard a try or your neighborhood. Here are some things that I did. I got a bouquet of flowers and I decided to take some of the flowers out and see how they would do. Um, I mentioned the red cabbage leaves a blue stain, red and yellow onion skins, and, and you'll, I'll show you an example of how those come out later. Also spices, some people like to put especially turmeric in or a tea bag in. And that Karen does a lot of um, staining. And my understanding is that she likes to do the submersion process and puts a lot of stuff in the water, all kinds of walnut dyes. I see you laughing, Karen. You could tell me if I'm wrong, <laughs> but she puts wall, she'll throw walnuts in there, branches, it, all kinds of stuff. 
and gets a nice effect from that. So here are the things that I've used as uh, the chemical that helps draw the tannin out of the leaves. You might be familiar with the alum. It's a pickling spice and you can buy it for about $5 for that little jar in Safeway. Or you can buy the one pound bag for about $5 or $3 actually at Dharma Trading Company. I like to use alum. It's my favorite of all the ones that I've tried. I also use a vinegar and we'll talk about rusting uh, metal and getting prints from metal in a bit. And that's what I use when I'm uh, using the vinegar. It helps draw out the rust. Washing soda is also pretty effective. It's a laundry aid. It's not washing powder or baking powder. It is washing soda. It is, uh, comes by, from Arm & Hammer was the brand that I was able to find. So it looks just like the baking soda box, uh, just bigger. And it leaves the paper whiter. When I first started, I used to do these really nice pristine prints of a single leaf. And that was great. And then I started getting wilder and letting the colors flow. But if you like that effect of a pristine white background, washing soda will help you get that. Paper, uh, the Canson Mixed Media is my favorite paper. But uh, many, many different kinds of papers will work. Um, I've used some Bristol and some watercolor paper, um, especially on the outsides of the sandwiches. Paper that won't work as well is your typical copier paper. While you'll get a print on there, the paper doesn't hold up very well to the steaming process. So as you're trying to take your sandwiches apart after you're done, I've had that paper just shred. Uh, drawing paper, the same. So use a, a bit heavier paper, uh, cardstock, and I use book pages a lot. I'll show you some examples of where I've printed on book pages, but I try to get the heavier pages that are um, have more cotton content and not slick. So they don't have a coating on it, but it, it has almost a rough, rougher surface from the cotton. So here's what else you'll need. You're, you'll, Get the plants and the mordant together. You'll need a plastic bin, your paper. I use a binder clips or some cord. You'll need that dedicated pot with some kind of a steamer basket or tray in the bottom. Some salt, some tongs, pot holders, and a weight. I use that, that ceramic tile there that you see in the picture. I use that as a weight. And that just uh, helps keep the papers pressed down for the ones that I'm steaming. Any questions so far? Okay. So rust, while I'm doing the eco printing, I figure I might as well throw some rust printing in there. So uh, uh, Patty gave me this chicken wire that for some reason she had laying around in her backyard. She doesn't have any chickens that I know of. But um, I set it outside and just let it rust. And if you put some vinegar on it or some, um, some, some other chemicals on it, it'll rust even quicker. And I just transfer that and the embossing property of it onto the page. Uh, you see some wire that I had there that was folded and a little gear. All kinds of things will work um, to get the rust effect. And using vinegar on the paper helps bring out that rust. So I start off by soaking the paper. There's my uh, plastic bin that I use. It's about the size of a dishwashing tub. Um, I put that two quart pitcher 
with about two tablespoons of um, the alum in the water, stir that around a bit, agitate it, let it dissolve in there. And then I start putting the pages in one at a time, just to make sure that the pages get evenly wet and I let all the bubbles come up to the surface. So if you put your whole stack of paper in at the same time, you'll find that they stick together and they don't get as wet betwe between the sheets. So do them one at a time. Just soak them for several minutes. Sometimes I'm in a hurry and it's only five minutes. Sometimes I'm, I do that and then I get some other things ready so it might be a little longer. Just want to make sure that the paper's wet. And then I'll take the whole stack of paper and flip it over so that I'm using the ones on the bottom that went in first. Then I start making my sandwiches. I, I make books out of a lot of these pages. So to make the folio, I like to arrange the leaves on one side and then fold it over. The leaves will print on both sides of the leaf. So I get prints on both sides of the paper and then I have a nice folio that I can use in a book. You can also um, fold it accordion style, that's fine, or roll it up. I'll show you some rolls later on. So I'm just arranging some leaves. I've got some flower petals on there. And there's my favorite Japanese maple. Um, feel free to add, add more overlap. Um, add some of the rusted metal, the wire in there and gears and stuff. See that one with the gear on it and it has the onion skins on it and one leaf. So I'm just pointing that out because I'm going to show you that after it's done. And that's the one with the gear on it. When it's done, you're going to see the gear and you'll notice how the onion skins work. So then I bind up my bundles. I bind them together with the binder clips. Sometimes I tie them, but I'm, I'm trying to get them pressed together tightly against the paper. I, that one on the left is a roll. And what I did was took a strip of paper and just laid it down and started laying leaves on top of it and just rolled it. Uh, Dottie and I did, I think it was 36 feet rolls one time <laughs> and 12 inches wide. If we, if we have time at the end, I'll show you a picture of it. It was quite fantastic. We had a forest of leaves and made a big mess. So steam, I found this uh, little thing, I think it's for eggs or something, but I found that the steamer basket was a little too high, but you can use it um, and have more water in the pan. This allows me to get more papers in the, in the pot. So you have to watch the water level because when the water dries out, that's when you end up with burned pages. I've done that a couple of times. Some people put rocks in the bottom and just have the paper sitting on top of the rocks. That works fine. Anything that you can use, if, if you want to use that steaming method, is fine to just get the pages up out of the water. I add a little salt to the water. That helps the water boil hotter. And um, I don't have an example, I think, of the steaming. There's the, there's the weight that I put on top of the pages to press them down. And you can kind of see that uh, the bundle that's tied there. So bring the water to a boil, add the bundles, use the weight, 
uh, cover, R make sure you have a lot of ventilation because that steam, you, you'll smell it. I had eucalyptus in this batch. And while I don't mind the smell of eucalyptus and it's um, might even be a good thing sometimes to breathe in eucalyptus with all the other stuff that's in there, you, you I, I wouldn't recommend breathing that stuff in. So turn the vent fan on, open the window. Um, I've done as little as two hours when I'm in a hurry, but I really like to go for those long four hour steams. <laughs> I really like it. Um, the This one that I did, I did for three hours. So kind of in the middle and you'll see how th some things say that. Some, some things, um, you know, steaming for two hours might be the optimum. Steaming for longer, you might lose the print. It, de it depends on the thing. And I haven't done enough, you know, testing one thing or another to find out. Um, what I do like to do, and, and Dottie does this all the time, is she pours in the vinegar over the rolls. And we did have rust in ours, but Dottie probably puts in vinegar anyway. It does, it helps to um, keep the colors moving around in there. So add, pour some rust, some vinegar directly on top of the packet, especially if you're doing rust. Here it is. So look at that. See that gear? It's a little to the left. And see the onion skin? Can I can't, oops, let me go back. Oh, I'll go ahead and go to this one. Because you can see it a little better. It almost looks like the gear is still on there, but I promise you it's not still on there. And remember it had the onion skins on it as well. You can see the print from the onion skin, but it doesn't move around. When you do the cabbage, the cabbage kind of floats around. The onion skin print just stays there. And just below that onion skin one, you see the outside paper that I used where the binder clips were. And along the bottom is the roll that I did. You can just see the, um, the long strip of paper that was the roll. Let's see, over a little to the right, almost to the edge, you could see where the chicken wire was. And if you go up from there, you can see another chicken wire one. I see people are looking at that, so I'll stay there for a bit. Any questions? Yes. Do you um, soak your leaves in water before you start to use them since you've dried them out? No, I don't. I use them dry. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Jamila, the dark gray in the middle, is that rose leaves or what kind of leaves is that? That's a uh, plum. Plum, thank you. Yeah, that's, um, I, I guess it's an ornamental plum. It's right in front of my uh, yard. Beautiful color, um, thank you. Along the walkway, yeah, I get great color from those. That's another one of my favorite ones. And, um, I'll read a comment from Virginia in the chat. She said, cabbage color moves because it's pretty juicy in and of itself. Onion skins are dry. The fleshier the leaves, the more movement you get. Whoa, all right, <laughs> Virginia. <laughs> yeah. And I don't dry out the cabbage. So <laughs> that's, I save the onion skins when I have them and the cabbage I usually uh, get a fresh head of cabbage, so it's not dried out. Cool. Okay. I have a question. I have a question. Yeah. When, uh, after you um, 
open up your bundle and everything and it's draw i when i've done it i've noticed that my colors are really intense when it's damp right afterwards but then they um they fade and i'm wondering if you do anything to your prints after you've taken them out of the steam um or do you just let them dry and they and they don't change color i i let them sit till they're cool for one thing um i don't want to open them when they're hot um sometimes i iron them and i find that the color gets a little bit more intense but i've always thought that that darker was just the darker of the wet paper oh okay that any color that you see on a paper is going to look darker when it's wet. I, I always thought that's what it was. I didn't think I was losing anything. Karen, did you notice that? Uh, no, you're right. It's basically sort of the wetness of the paper that makes it dark, just like your hair looks darker when it's wet, generally speaking. Okay. Um, the only thing you can do is choose more set you know leaves that have more color in them so you get a greater density of dye in a specific location okay i have a question for you jamila um yeah. so for anyone who has not seen jamila's beautiful work um, you can check it out on our website bayareabookartists.org um, in the gallery and in a few of the uh, projects we did specifically for the virtual jam too. Um, but my question is, do you kind of keep a stash of all these um, eco dyed papers? And then uh, once you figure out what project you have in mind, you choose from your papers? Or do you like to go into the dyeing process knowing already what you're going to use them for? Uh, let me share my screen again. Let me see if I can get to my um uh, so I absolutely uh, rarely plan <laughs> what I'm going to do with the papers because I don't know how they're going to come out. So um, I rarely plan what's going to happen. But I did do, a, I had a book that I had made. I was trying something out. And I just made it with white paper and then I eco dyed the whole book. It was just um, on that Canson mixed media paper and I just dyed the whole, the whole thing. And I have, if I have planned an accordion before, I have done the accordion ahead of time, folded it, and then eco dyed it. Um, this is um, rose, roses, rose leaves on the folio. Um, I think that's also rose leaves. And this is the um, washing soda. So you see what I mean about the whiteness of the paper versus this one that probably has more vinegar in it. So the vinegar gives it a little more browner tone. There's some more rose leaves. I really like how the rose leaves comes out and that's probably also the washing soda. And that was back when I was doing that pristine one leaf at a time. So then I liked them and I made cards out of them. So I made a bunch of greeting cards. Uh, the one that says sympathy, that is pine needles from a pine branch that came out really interesting. You see an oak leaf toward the front and there's some silver dollar eucalyptus in the middle there. Um, on the far left is, um, oh, what's that leaf that it's, it's a tree that has a little fruit on it, like a little bitty orange. Loquat? Yeah, loquat, thank you. <laughs> That's a loquat leaf that, uh, thinking of you on the, on the left side. There's some more, those are the same leaves, cards. Uh, here's, this is Dottie's. <laughs> 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 
And I, Dottie did this one. It came out so beautifully. I just had to show it. It's um, encaustic on top of it. Yeah. Do you want to say something about it, Dottie? I think she's still here. We can come back to it. This is a book that I did um, out of the eco printed, out of the um, papers, and I believe I did it on book pages. Maybe not. But that's the inside of it. It's, it's a sewn binding. You can see. I saw that little bit of writing on the front, so I thought maybe that was one. Here's another one that I did out of pages. Died as an inside view. You're answering the request that is in the chat from Rebecca to show some examples of books. Oh, cool. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jamila, I yeah. have a question. You said you put vinegar or and salt in the water but yes. the the paper is not in the water it's it's on the rock or on, on the the yeah so what does the vinegar do if it's not touching the paper it well i pour it over the paper or i soak the paper in the vinegar okay so instead of using the alum or along with the alum, you could soak the paper in the vinegar. And then it's on the paper touching the metal. And when I pour it over the top, I pour it over the pages so that it seeps in between the pages. The pages are all wet at that point, right? When I'm putting them in the pot. And so it seeps in between the pages and it helps to draw the um, especially the metals out, the rust off of the metal. Okay. Thank you. I mentioned the ginkgo, ginkgo earlier because I like the shape. Well, here's one with the ginkgo and that dark spot is a bit of metal, a piece of wire that I had in there. You can see how it, it's uh, kind of um, swirly up the side on both sides. That's a piece of metal. And that's the result from the ginkgo leaves. Not bad. There's another piece of metal that I put on the front of a book. Here's one that I did and um, just did a long piece of paper. This might be one of the ones that got burned. <laughs> it looks very dark, but I still liked it. We had a question about the previous one, um, asking what the shape on the front was. It's a book plate, um, what, something that you would like slip the name of a book behind a title or something like that. Yeah, it's just a piece of metal that I had and I, uh, put them outside and, and some vinegar and let them rust. Yeah. And then that's one of the plum leaves. It gave a nice print. There is some, um, that's the cover of the previous book. And that's some eco dyeing, um, that loquat leaf on book pages. There's that book again. Um, not quite sure what my hand is doing in there, but <laughs> eco printed pages. Oh, you know what this is? So after a lot of prints and a lot of leftover stuff, Dottie's still mad at me for this book. I just had a lot of little pieces left and I cut them all up 
and sewed it together and made this really long book. And so it was, you know, bits and pieces. You can see on that one print there, you can see where the bottom edge has the blue on it and the top edge, I, I cut it off from something. So it was just leftover bits and pieces of eco dye. How big is that book? It's, um, it was about six inches thick, six or seven inches thick and three by three. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's uh, more eco dyeing on book pages. And um, I attached some other book pages. This is a, one of the plaques from when I did the 50-50 show. I did all 50 of the plaques covered in um, eco dye book pages from a, a very old book. Uh, printed in 1873, I believe. If you look at the type on the page, the first line, but hold, whilst thus we play the fool, whilst has, uh, is spelled V-H-I-L, what looks like a F is actually the elongated S. T, it's pronounced like an S, so it's whilst. And I love that it had those elongated Fs in there. Things of no convenience expressing. But unfortunately, I used the real book <laughs> instead of photocopying it. So I used up the book. Now I'm going around looking for this book of poetry from 1873, which is impossible to find. Thanks to Karen for bringing it from the uh, library cell. There's another one I did. Um, some little rolls of paper to make that one, but you can see the print has a wire, that Patty's chicken wire on there. Jamila, we have one more request from Dottie to show Kimono Angel exhibited at Ann and Mark's art party, okay. Argus Gallery, Finland. Let me get to Kimono Angel. It is. Fabulous. Okay, I'm going to skip ahead because I'm pretty sure it's in here, but it's, whoops, there's one of one bit of it. I think that's when we first uh, unrolled it. So you can't even see the whole thing. There it is. Can you see the, um, the piece the eco print goes all the way from the floor and wraps around and is on the floor again on both sides. There's the whole thing of it. It's a lot of work, Dottie. <laughs> a lot of leaves. We had that paper soaking in the tub, like round, you know, rolled up, trying to soak it and then trying to pull it out of the roll so the other piece didn't get, get out of the bath. And oh my gosh. And it was one long piece of paper. Oh, yeah. Yep. Wow. Yeah, yep. it was a roll. They used to sell that Canson mixed media on a roll, 36 feet, I believe. And uh, we cut the roll into 12 inch segments. So each of those are 12 inches wide and we use the whole roll. Yep. Here's another little one I did when I had uh, scraps left over. This one I still have. 
Do you iron your paper when it's done, when you have made the print? Sometimes I do. Um, sometimes I iron it, sometimes I don't. This is kind of collaged together, different pieces. That's my whole of the 50-50 with the eco dyed pages. So you see, I did different things on top of it. So we have five minutes left, Jamila. So people get your questions in. Do you have a specific formula that you use for your steam bath or do you vary it a lot? Um, I put the, I put about a teaspoon of salt in the water and I try to put one piece of rust in the water. I don't know why. But as I read different things online, some people said put a penny in there. I don't know what that does. <laughs> Maybe Karen knows, but uh, so that's, that's my formula is put a nail, put in some salt and a rusty nail, and that's it with, with the water. And keep, fill, keep refilling it is the most important part. Thanks. Do you ever submerge or is it always steam? Yes, yeah, sorry, I didn't talk much about the submersion. I do submerge and when I submerge, I'm even more likely to put, uh, instead of a rusty nail, I, I have a rusty hinge <laughs> that I put in there or um, some other branches or stuff. I've seen Dorit do it where she just goes around the garden and puts all kind of branches and stuff in there. Um, it's a different, it's a different kind of a look, more, um, abstract, I would say. Yeah. And Jamila, um, and Sia was asking if you have all of these beautiful images on your website. Um, uh, I haven't updated my website in a long time. <laughs> Ask and Sia if she wants to update the website. <laughs> <laughs> See, if we were live, she would throw something at me. No, she's much more polite than that. <laughs> there are quite a few on the JAM website, too, if anyone wants to have a look. Yeah, I don't, I don't often um, equate it with book arts, although I do make books out of them. And I make them from books, obviously, that uh, I've got, I've shown I'm, I'm making them out of old books. But um, yeah, I haven't really put them on the um, website. Yeah. Any other questions? We have just um, a comment from Dottie that Wood gives a black halo when steamed. Ah, okay. And a, a question from Sandra, if these are light fast. Well, you know, I'm still, I, I started this maybe eight years ago and um, I haven't had any noticeable loss of color. Um, yeah, someone, I think so, I got a text, it's asking about flowers. Um, I haven't had a lot of luck with flowers, um, petals. I don't find a lot. I think I'm probably steaming too long because I like to do those long steams. But um, other people have had luck with flowers and have had pinks and different colors come out um, from the flowers. I, t I tend not to use flowers. I just happen to have that bouquet 
and um you know it's it was here so i used it <laughs> amela can you go back to the book a couple before it looked like you used a pine cone or something no the other way this 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 has uh, on that sympathy there's a pine pine needles a branch of pine needles on that sympathy card you were saying no, that but it was one of the books that one that is what, the what did you wire. what's the front of that that's chicken wire chicken wire okay yeah that's thank the you chicken wire and there is a piece of metal that was also on there. It, it was just a piece of metal that had holes in it, like it was might have been part of a door hinge. Can you see it just up above the chicken yes. wire? Yes. That's wild. Yeah. So it, it almost looks like it's still on there. But I promise you it's not. <laughs> well, I think um, I'm going to read one last comment, um, which I very much agree with from Donna. Thank you, Jamila, for your wonderful talk. Your calm, patient voice is very soothing, and your work is beautiful and inspiring, and I agree wholeheartedly. Thank you. Thanks so much, Donna. I'm glad you could join. And I think I'm, I'm going to need to um, end the talk for the recording to process. But okay. in 15 minutes, we're going to have um, Ben Albritton, the Rare Books curator from Stanford, talk to us and show us some material. So um, please do hop back on um, maybe in about five minutes and at um, 1.30, we'll hear from him. Thank you so much, Jamila. And thank you, Karen, for co-facilitating and to all of you for your wonderful questions. Yes. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank for you. Was Jamila. It was great. <laughs> Thank you, Jamila. Oh, you're welcome. Bye. Bye-bye. You. Bye. 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 Great. great as always. Hi, <laughs> Daniela. See you later. Bye. Bye.